Dear colleagues, kind greetings from Australia. I am the president of the World Federation of Culture Collections, together with my vice president, uh, Dr. Manuela da Silva. We are going to present the World Federation of Culture Collections and the Global Genome Diversity Network sharing the same mission for sustainable futures. Before I start, on behalf of the WFCC, I would like to thank the organizers for their kind invitation. What is WFCC? WFCC is a multidisciplinary commission of the International Union of Biological Sciences and the Federation within the International Union of Microbiological Societies. So it is the largest independent global organization that represents culture collections concerned with the collection, authentication, maintenance, and distribution of cultures of microorganisms and cultured cells. WFCC's main aims are to promote and support the establishment of culture collections and related services, to provide liaison and networking between the collections and their users, and to ensure the long-term perpetuation of collections, including those listed as endangered. So you can see IUMS, IUBS, UNESCO, and UNESCO World Network of Microbiological Resource Centers, and then connecting into World Data Center of Microorganisms. So it's an interlinked um, existence. So our current committees are access policies and legal frameworks, networking capacity building and education, postal quarantine and safety regulations, standardization and best practice guidelines, IP patent and commercialization, and endangered collections. Key conventions, if we look at it from the 1990s, they have been the Earth Summit in Rio 1992 and Convention of Biological Diversity in 93. Cartagena Protocol 2003 and Nagoya 2010, Biological Research Centers and Global Biological Research Center Initiative by the OECD 2001, OECD Best Practice Guidelines for the BRCs 2007, and Global Biological Information Facility, GBIF 2001. So CBD, obliges governments to take several measures to feel, fulfill its objectives of conserving biodiversity and using it sustainably. They include monitoring and identification of biodiversity, environmental impact assessments, national strategies, plans, or programs to conserve and use of the components of biological diversity sustainably, the integration of biodiversity policy into relevant sectoral or cross-sectoral plans, programs, and policies. The convention also focuses on threats to biodiversity and ecosystem services, including those from climate change and technological advancements utilizing biological resources. So it promotes a sustainable development and the future we want. Nagoya is important in terms of access to genetic resources and fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from their utilization. It ensures greater legal certainty and transparency for both providers and users, such as specific obligations to support compliance with domestic legislation, regulatory requirements for genetic resource providers, Contractual obligations reflected in mutually agreed terms, as well as regulatory access to traditional knowledge associated with genetic resources held by indigenous and local communities. 
It also supports the creation of incentives to conserve biodiversity, sustainable use of its components, and further enhancement of the contribution of biodiversity to human development and well-being. OECD best practice guidelines was developed after extensive consultation with the scientific communities. So examples include authenticity of the biological material, databases, bioinformatics, and accuracy of labeling, accuracy of the data collected and supplied, raising of expertise of human resources, particularly of a new generation of taxonomists able to use molecular techniques and informants. So full compliance for any culture collection is regarded as the pinnacle of success. There is also a global biological research center network to improve international access to high quality biological material and data, which will function as complementary to the GBIF. And GBIF again was a very successful OECD initiative. And then it was uh, set up uh, as an international mechanism to make biodiversity data and information accessible world. If you look at the biodiversity, it has four main components. The uh, first one is genetic diversity, species diversity, and ecosystem diversity. And in the very recent years, with the development of the molecular techniques, we now refer to functional diversity. It's a variety of biological processes, functions, or characteristics of a particular species. Why? Because so many extreme events are taking place and we have microbial indicators, microbial warning systems to which we have to pay attention. We look at this caricature, Stone Age, Golden Age, Space Age, and Garbage. What happened? What went wrong, especially from Space Age to Garbage? How we ended up? in polluting to such extent and then impacting the, you know, uh, uh, environmental processes. If we look at the soil microbial responses to climate change, it is from increased temperature to permafrost storing, drought, increased precipitation, seawater intrusion, fire and elevated carbon dioxide. An in-depth knowledge and understanding of microbial ecology, physiology, metabolism, taxonomy, genetics, and host microbial interactions. We have to be ready also for future diseases, pandemics, epidemics. And there are, you know, due to the defrosting permafrost, new diseases or re-emerging ones coming out like seal finger, or anthrax. And now we have to map the emerging pathogens, viruses of wild animals, urgent need of mapping of these viruses. Molecular advances now giving us these powerful tools because they allow us to identify who is there, what are they doing, and how are they doing it. So if we are extremely lucky, we can now draw conclusions on the functional diversity of microorganisms. Also, there are very important aspects, factual information generation, interpretive uh, information generation, decision-making information generation, and predictive information generation. Especially predictive ones, mathematical models, for example, they can uh, tell us, okay, uh, what is to be predicted. And then um, we can monitor, for example, a population of pathogens. Or decision-making information, okay, 
So uh, computer programs that emulate decision-making processes based on the factual information and then sets of logical rules for applying that knowledge to solve problems. They are used for agricultural applications, for example, to financial analysis, advisory services. So if we come back to you, your um, uh, missions and goals, we have overlapping targets here. We are all committed to the standards and best practice guidelines. You are involved in molecular data and we deal with biological entities. But we play a role together as a capacity builders and we help countries better understand and utilize their microbial diversity. And also public and policy makers can call upon us to develop regulations and guidelines for the safe and ethical use of biological resources. So we always played a significant role uh, by connecting culture collections worldwide so that their legislative bodies can establish guidelines in line with global consensus. And now you are doing this using the molecular information. So we also have a World Data Center of Microorganisms. Okay, we have these 843 collections and over 3 million microorganisms, which are looked after, you know, over uh, nearly 8,000 staff members. And data is uh, preserved in the WDCM. We also started a 10K type strain sequencing project. Okay. And uh, we ensure the integrity of reference strains, type strains used all around the world. So, what we are doing, we are pushing culture collections from a static existence to dynamic ones, because we are biobanking on biodiversity, which will be natural way out of poverty as well. We are capturing advances for sustainable futures, and we are both playing catalyst roles in these manners. And also WFCC continues to monitor microbial mediated processes in the environment. Global data sharing is encouraged. Academia, government and private sector collaboration and bringing science to public level and increased scientific understanding in the society. Like in these two key papers published, the urgent need for microbiology literacy in the society and scientists warning to humanity, microorganisms and climate change. So we also align with these missions. So finally, what is most important for all of us, for both organizations, aligning with the sustainable development goals and all the information coming from uh, microbial uh, data and molecular data will facilitate development of biotechnologies, microbial mediated biotechnologies, and in turn, they will help us to achieve sustainable development goals because they all will have applications in these all 17 different uh, sustainable developments. So number 17, partnership with goals. And my talk and my invitation brings us here. Both organizations will be uh, aligning and working together. Okay, and we will be organizing events uh, together. So while you are having the conference in Mexico, I am in Canberra in Australia attending GBIF conference. So we will exchange information afterwards from both conferences. And I thank you again for inviting us and look forward to fruitful co uh, collaborations in the future. Thank you.